All right, so welcome to the Talk to You Later solo lesson. This is um, played by Steve Lukather from Toto, just a great guitar player. And this is a really difficult solo. I mean, some of it's not so bad, but uh, he's just a, he's like a virtuoso guitarist, you know? So playing these guys' stuff is always really challenging. Well, it is for me. So I've got this on my uh, gain channel in my Ignator Renegade, and I've got the gain at about three o'clock and I've got some digital delay, just a tap tempo, and I've got some reverb on it too. And I'm on my neck pickup. If you click this I here, or the link in the description box below, there's a couple of links down there actually. One will take you to this the page of my website where this song is at, and it's got my demo on it, and the rhythm lesson. And also, um, I've got a gear page there too, because I get a ton of questions about what amp I'm using and all this stuff. Uh, my setup is super dead easy. It's really simple. I'm not a real gear kind of guy, right? Um, you know, in my opinion, it's <laughs> it's 90% how you play that is going to get the sound, right? Anyways, that's a whole other story. So we're in the key of E for this song, right? The whole song is in the key of e, e major. All the solos are in E major, all the fills, except for the last lick, which is an E mixolydian. Okay, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, this is going to be a fairly long lesson because there's a lot of licks in this song, right? So we're going to start here on uh, B, on the uh, B12. Put a little vibrato on that. And okay, so we're going up to the 16th and half step in and then back to, or down to G16 and then up to E19. So... And the whole time you want to really mute out, you, you know, deaden the strings that you're not playing because with a fair amount of gain, you're going to get a lot of string noise, right? Okay, so that's your first thing. And then, the you know, the song kind of goes into... All that stuff. And then your next fill is going to be where he comes in like this. Okay, and that's just... 14th of the beat, and we're in this first position pentatonic kind of, right? And then we're going to come way up here to the 19th of the beat, and we're going to go really like that fill. That's like an F sharp, and then chromatically from 19... Uh, 18, 17. Right? And then we're going to come down here and go. That's just on a D7. Full step bend. Let it drift down. And then we hit uh, the G sharp note there. Because that's like the third of the chord which is where we're at now in the song and that's going to come up here just to the 12 uh, 10 and 9 of the B back up there then okay so that that whole bit there would be takes us into the chorus and then the next fill you're going to hear is a chorus fill where you know we're going and that fill is going to go like this we're thinking fifth position uh, major pentatonic E major pentatonic and we're going to, going to go and that's like a gallop, right? And we gotta mute all the strings, except for the one we're playing. Right? 
and then we bend up, you could go whatever way you want to do it. And then the next like it's going to be so I'm thinking now first position major pentatonic E major, right? And it's just but with bends, right? And then we're And then we get into the solo, okay? And the first lick of the solo is this. So we're going to be down here. And here we're thinking. The E major pentatonic, right? So. I get that with my little finger there. So it's dan 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 dan, and that it's like a real accent there. Okay, that's your first part. Then we're going to come up here. And here we're thinking fifth position. E major kind of tonic, right? So. Then we're going to slide it up. Now, this part here, I'm not sure if I'm doing this how he's doing it. Um, You know, he could be picking all of them. I don't know. I couldn't tell, right? So I just did it like this. Slide. It's all like a legato. And when you, you know, get your volume up. So we've got slide into G13. Uh, And then G14. That's dun da da. That's on the, uh, what is that? 17th of the B. So there's two distinct licks there. The first one is, and the next one is, now we're going to go Okay, super cool lick. I really like this lick. And here we're... We're in the, what is that? The second position. E major pentatonic, right? Now we're all going to bounce all of this off this note here, the um, C sharp note on B14. That's your first bit of it. It's all down up, right? Then we're going to shift up there like that, right? So we've got B17 and E19. And 
Again, down up. Do do do, right? So. And that is really cool. I really like that because it's it's very powerful. You know, you got like the B string bouncing off the B string, and everything is ringing. Okay. Now we're gonna go. We're gonna bend that. Now we're gonna do this kind of triplet lick. Just going down the E major scale on one string, right? And that's actually pretty fast. But to get fast, you do it slow, right? Like I'm pulling that off. I'm only picking once, right? And then we end up by going bend, right? No, I've got tens on this guitar, so bending is, um, well, it's harder than it is with nines. Let's just put it that way. This song would be a lot easier to play with nines with all the bending and the vibratos and stuff. Okay, so let's do it from... and get that last note with your middle finger, right? And then... A lot of guys might be used to playing that kind of look here. Right? Because we're in our favorite, you know, position five uh, major pentatonic. My favorite position, one of them, because it's position one of the minor, right? So, but he's doing it here. Um, And now we come to this absolutely killer lick, and it goes like this. Okay, uh, I struggle with this lick a lot because there's a lot of different ways you can play that, right? Um, you, know, you can think of it like that, just bouncing up there, but I'm hearing slides, right? So I'm hearing... Right? You can definitely hear those slides. So what it is, and what I think it is, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is what he's doing. I'm gonna slide into G9, uh, and we're gonna play E7. And that form is gonna be the same except for once, right? Well, actually twice as we go up. So it's gonna be like this. The same form on two frets. There, now we got a different form. That's like a... So now we're going to go up here on, uh, what is that, 16, G16, and E14, okay, so up two frets again, and then we're going to we're gonna just carry, stay there and carry that on. So. Like that, right? And I actually hear that note in there. The last note before this high one, that's what I hear. I could be wrong there too. 
then we're gonna bend up way up in you know the outer reaches of space here on the last fret 22nd fret full step in and then we do as much vibrato as as we can muster right and he's got a really wide vibrato which again a lot easier with nines than it is with tens right okay so that lick <laughs> and on the record, this is flat. And if you read my little write-up, there's a quote from him. And he talks about how that note was flat, but they were they didn't want to touch it. They didn't want to fix it because they just liked the spirit of the solo, right? Okay. And then that's it for like the main solo. So let's just go over that whole thing. Play it slow. Okay, and then um, there's going to be some more fills, and the first one's going to be... So that... We're thinking first position, E major pentatonic. That's what I'm hearing. Then... On the D string, right? That's what is that? 17, 18, 16, 14. Now, there again, you know, I'm not sure that's how he's playing it because, of course, there's, you know, he doesn't play in the tubes. He's a studio guy, so there's no videos of him playing this song. Maybe there is, I can't find one. But that sounded great to me. And again, try and get as wide a vibrato as you can on that note. And then we're going to go. That's tricky, that one. So we're on the 19th of the B. Ending on the 18th of the G. And then a 17, 16, 18. 17, 16 B and an 18 on the G. So then So, then, then we're going to hit this big high note, and there again, you know, try and get as much wide vibrato as you can there. And then he's going to go. before that big descending thing. And that's just 19, 17, 18 on the eighth. Twice, right? Pull off, pick up once. So. And then from there on in, it's kind of do what you want time, you know? But what I'm trying to do is go you know just trying to you know kind of try to make it sound smooth I'm trying to go
that sort of idea, right? Just all pull offs. You know, whatever you want there, really. I mean, I'm sure that's what he's doing. He's just kind of, you know, going crazy on that E string. And then we're going to go way down here on the second fret of the G. Right, so it's just a bend. start the descent or ascending thing and what I'm doing is I'm gonna include this open E string in that right so and it's all right do that again real slow That's, um, it ends there. In my opinion, it ends there. And then he overdubs the, uh, that look there, right? Which we'll get into in a second. <laughs> I mean, that look alone there is like an entire lesson. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'm changing fingers there. And there's quite a bit of dissonance when you include that E string, but I think it sounds cool, right? And then we get into the last lick, and I'm just, I'm kind of starting it like he's starting it, but I'm not doing the rest like him. I'm doing my own thing there. And the interesting thing about this lick, it, okay, it's E mixolydian. It's not the E major scale. This is the only time in the song where he kind of changes the scale, right? So when you say E mixolydian, all you mean is it's A major, right? It's A major. Just play A major, you're good, you're golden. You can play A major anywhere. A major pentatonic, A major, major, you know, all the seven notes. You don't need to think in terms of, oh God, what is E mixolydian now, you know? It's just A major, right? So we're gonna start up here. Just on the 16th fret, 14th, sorry. And try and get some vibrato on that. Then I'm gonna go little finger, middle finger, first finger. Right. That's kind of tricky. And here I'm thinking. A major, right? That's three notes per string, second position. But it's just A major, right? I don't think need to think E mixolydian. Then I'm gonna go. And I'm getting down to this, which is now. First position, three notes per string, right? So.
I mean, it's hard to teach legato stuff, right? Because it could take you like hours to go over every note. But um, the concept, you know. <laughs> There, I'm changing positions on the same string, which Joe Satriani does a lot, right? And I kind of learned that from him. I remember when I first learned that, because um, I'm going, you know, doing legato like that, right? But then I hear him, and he goes, he's jumping on the same string, right? Which is super cool. And that's kind of almost his, I mean, I don't know if he thinks this or not, but I see that as, as his kind of signature legato stuff, right? So we're here. And we're, again, we're gonna, change positions there. Here we're just in a regular, you know, like sort of um, caged shape. down here and then we're going to end it by going just chromatic okay so try and do the whole thing real slow and of course when you do this it's not going to be like how I do it you know you're going to put your own spin on this and you should because um, everybody's kind of take on legato is going to be a bit different And that's it, that's the last lick. So super like challenging solo, you know, like he's really into like moving up and down the neck, you know, like most of us I think. You know, kind of like to get in that familiar position, but he's all over the place. And probably my favorite look at the solo is that one. That's crazy, that's like right up the neck playing vertically, right? He's a great guitar player. Anyways, that's it for this one. I hope you get something out of this. I hope it um, helps you learn the solo and we'll talk to you next time.